How's it going everybody and welcome back to our Nexus dashboard series. In this video we're going to go ahead and set up some OSPF adjacencies between KDK 15, 17, and 21 to get all the routing and then we're going to do some uh, layer 2 networking down here to get 23 and 24 set up for PCs 51 to 54. I still haven't been able to resolve the KDK 16 issue so we're just not going to have full redundancy everywhere but that's no big deal. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get to the config so we can get this party started. So I'm just gonna bring this guy over here like so. Scoot this guy over just a touch. So we're gonna go ahead and cat AK15. We're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go router OSPF1 network of 10.15.17.0 slash 24 and then area zero. Then on 17, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go interface range gig one through two, type an IP OSPF one area zero. This is a different variation of the same con same command, uh, except for it's the interface level config. And then on switch 21, I will go to um, interface gig zero slash zero, IP OSPF one area, zero and shortly we should see 15 17 and uh, 21 starting to form adjacencies with one another um, for some reason the I don't know what it was but the uh, the connection times out on 16 so I'm not exactly sure what the deal is show ARP I'm ARPing for stuff so it's it's uh, it's definitely um, getting the right MAC address. So 15 and 17 are now appeared, which is what we want to see. Uh, do show IP route. We're not going to see anything. Do show IP route. Oot. Route. Um, and then 21's there. Do show IP route. We're gonna learn the 1517 subnet. What I'm gonna do on this guy here though is I'm gonna configure interface range k0 slash three through, or sorry. Um, let's do interface range gig zero through, uh, no, one through three and gig one slash zero. I'm gonna type in switch port, switch port, uh, trunk encapsulation dot one Q switch port mode of trunk, and then I'm going to create a couple of VLANs. I'm going to say VLAN 100, name VLAN 100, VLAN 101, name VLAN 101, and then I'm going to create interface VLAN 100. IP address here will be 10.1.100.1 slash 24. Uh, no shut that and then VLAN 101 uh, same difference just like that and then we're gonna do show IP interface brief okay they're uh, they've been brought up and I just need to go into router OSPF one network of 10.1.0.0.0.255.255 area zero just basically saying anything 10.1 I'm gonna go ahead and just advertise it into OSPF so we have that done now on 23 and 24 respectively I need to type in host name is gonna be switch 23 Interface range gig one slash two through three. Switch port, uh, switch port, switch port trunk and cap dot one Q switch port mode trunk. And then we're going to say VLAN 100 name VLAN 100 VLAN 101 name VLAN 101. We're going to go interface gig zero slash zero. Switch port, switch port mode access switch port access vlan 
uh, 101 spanning tree port fast and then gig one uh, gig zero one switch port switch port mode access spanning tree VLAN 101 100 and then spanning tree port fast do show VLAN brief do show interface trunk I'm gonna go ahead and save that config and then if we do show Mac address table dynamic. We should be learning some stuff in, which we are. We're learning gig one three. Um, we we should be learning some more details in here once we get uh, fifty one gig zero zero and gig zero one. There we go. So the Mac address has already been learned the way we expect them to be. So, because uh, we have at least this base configuration squared away, if I go to switch 21 and do show Mac address table dynamic, I should be learning some stuff in. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is on cat AK15, I'm gonna do some redistribution. So on this guy here, I'm going to go underneath router BGP 65011, address family IPv4 unicast. Once I've been redistribute OSPF one, and then I'm gonna match uh, internal and external routes. And then router OSPF1, I'm gonna redistribute BGP 65,011. And I'm gonna say um, subnets. So if I do show BGP IPv4 unicast, I should see a couple of routes in my writing table now. 10.1.100 and 10.1.101. And I should be able to see do show IP OSPF database. I should see 10.1.10 and 10.1.11. If I jump over here to switch 23 and oh no, not 23, 21. And I do show IP route. I will see 10.1.10 and 10.1.11 as external routes, which is exactly what I'm looking for. Now, if I bring over this guy and I do PC51, I do a ping to 10.1.101.1. I should be able to ping my gateway. And I should also be able to ping something inside of the fabric. So let me go ahead and ping 10.1.10.32. See if that's working. I can ping, so I ping 10.1.10.32. Uh, so I went from here all the way through the fabric and ended up telnetting or pinging that guy. So if we do a trace route, to 10.1.10.32 numerically. I hit my gateway, I jumped to uh, CAT AK17, then CAT AK15, then I hit my 10.17.15.1. Let me go ahead and get this stuff out of the way. Um, 10.17.15.1. So I, okay, so that's hitting Nexus 7 is what that is, that I hit 10, 1, 10, 1, which means that I'm bridging in at this point and then I'm routing from here to here and then going down. So I have external connectivity all set up. So just to take this a step further, I'm gonna go to server 32, because I'm going from an odd VLAN to an even VLAN on server 32. I'm gonna create a username. Username is gonna be uh, Cisco privilege level 15 secret Cisco type in uh, line VTY zero space four transport input is telnet and I'll, I'll be login local I'm gonna go back to 51 I'm gonna say I've been telnet to 10.1.10.32 type in Cisco and Cisco and I'm on C I'm on server 32, which means that my the everything that I've done thus far is working the way that I would expect it to. So I have the communication up and running. I have a telnet connection passing through 51 gateways on 21, hitting 17, 15, going to seven, jumping over the uh, there's a VXLAN encapsulated tunnel between seven and three, and then traffic is being dropped on 32. So it's working as we would expect it to. 
Let me pull this back up here. Um, let's pull up this guy right here. What I want to do is on three, I'm going to log back in here. I'm going to do a show NVE peers. I'm going to have a uh, term with 150. You can see that I have a peering to seven, the way you would expect it to be, and everything looks pretty good. So operationally, everything that I wanted to have working is doing exactly what I wanted to. So um, that is pretty much it. I can do some more testing and stuff like that, but it really is going to be the pretty much the exact same thing. Again, I just have a couple of PCs here just to, to demonstrate that it's working the way you would expect it to. So now I have tested tenant routed multicast in an environment where the source of the multicast traffic was coming from the servers down here and not from up here, which is how you normally would have it anyway. So there is some additional testing and stuff like that that I can do beyond what I've already done. Um, if I could get CAT AK16 to do its thing and have ECMP routing set up, I'd be a little bit happier. But at the end of the day, the lab is working the way I expect it to. I, I can connect from a PC into the fabric and hit a server uh, behind the fabric. So that's essentially what I'm trying to do. So it's working the way that I would want. So at the end of the day, there's a VXLAN tunnel set up between seven and three. They're communicating with each other. Everybody's, uh, everything's working the way I would expect it to and all the good stuff that goes along with it. So if you guys have any questions for me, please leave those down in the comments section below. This process is pretty straightforward to do. What I'm gonna be doing in the next videos um, I'm going to be standing up the MPLS VPN and getting the, this connect, connectivity here working. Um, the goal is to interconnect the two sites together. And what I'm going to be doing is uh, getting this fabric up and running as well. So that is my goal for the next couple of videos to get that all stood up. I'll be walking you through all those details as well to get those things operational. It shouldn't be too difficult to do. Um, uh, I'm not going to go into a super deep dive on how MPLS VPNs work or anything like that, but it's more what do you need to know about this to get it working and stuff like that. So that's pretty much where that is sitting. With that being said, I want to thank you guys for stopping by and hanging out with me, and I'll catch all of you guys in the next video.